Hi guys, Greg at Best Choice Trailers. Today we're going to take a walk around the Shore Track 7x12, 14,000 pound heavy duty low profile dump trailer. We call this our deluxe model. We'll show you uh, here why we call this our deluxe, as well as all the standard features. So, getting to the deluxe part of the trailer first, uh, it's got the hydraulic jack upgrade. We do that on quite a few of the Shore Track dumps. It's also got a 7 gauge floor, which you're not going to be able to tell just from looking at it, but we'll get to that in a second. The uh, the 7 gauge floor adds uh, a little bit extra steel right where uh, you're going to want it if you're a heavier duty application, putting uh, concrete debris or if you're loading a piece of equipment in this. Just to give you an idea, 7 gauge floor adds about 2.5 pounds per square foot, 7 by 12 trailer, 84 square feet. You're going to add about 200, foot, uh, 200 pounds of steel right to the floor of this particular unit. So let's take a walk around it. We'll show you all the features here. It's got a six hole adjustable coupler. It is a two and five sixteenth inch uh, cast coupler. Uh, this style coupler, if you're not familiar, is uh, backward is closed. Easier to operate with two hands than one. But uh, as it says right on it, closed uh, is back, forward is open. Six hole coupler gives you, I believe, four different spots you can mount your coupler to for different height adjustments. Uh, on the jack itself, again, it is a 12K. It's got the inner leg that's going to come out. No need for uh, wood blocks or similar. It's also got a nice big wide foot, so if you're in mud or sand or similar, it gives you some extra stability. Notice that jack is bolt on if you ever were to damage it or whatnot. Uh, fairly simple to replace. You also notice it's a sealed uh, wiring harness that is grommeted and ran in frame. It's a standard 7-pin RV blade style plug. It's also got a little plug holder. You're going to find there's a lot of little details on Shore Track they do that, that not every manufacturer takes the time to you know, identify those user-friendly features. Another, for instance, would be a chain holder. Uh, for your safety chains, just keeps them up out of the mud. Uh, a lot of times, too, I catch myself putting them up front like so. It uh, does have a toolbox. You've got an integrated 110 volt charger. So you just simply supply house current. Uh, toolbox lid is lockable. Keys to the toolbox on the back side of the handle. Currently using a DECA deep cycle marine battery. It may change over time, but they've, they've had DECA quite a while. Very good battery. You're going to find there's uh, two additional terminals or, or ring terminals on each one of the, the battery posts. Obviously, you've got your main supply lines, and then you've got a uh, smaller gauge wire that's going to give you a, a trickle accessory line charge and that would be this one that exits the box that's the one that's going to trickle charge off your truck at roughly a 3.7 amp hour rate uh, the battery on these is a 140 amp hour battery so that means roughly 30 40 hours uh, it would take of driving around to fully charge the battery some customers unfortunately think that's going to give them all the charging they need and that really depends on duty cycle uh, for a lower volume duty cycle user that may work uh, may not so this is the inside of that 110 volt charger we showed you that was outside you'll notice that that is a 2 amp hour charger uh, so if you're fully discharged on the battery you'd want to plug it in for a weekend not just for an overnight if you were gonna have heavy continual use the next day so a couple different ways you can do hydraulics uh, standard up down uh, more importantly, what I was getting to, you can either do a diverter valve or a four-button remote. Uh, each have pros and cons. Uh, this one here has the diverter valve. And basically, what you would do is pick your function. Right now, we're set to the up-down. And then, now, we're set to the box. So all we're doing is using two standard coils and just changing which location we want the fluid to go to. So it is a, a KTI pump, uh, power up and power down. So Short Track, like most in the industry, do a two foot side on these. We do find some in the industry do a little bit lower side, some uh, 20 inches. Uh, this also has the ability to use the bulkhead 
to go another one foot of side extension so you can fairly easily go up to three foot. Also notice now new for 2021 is a tarp kit. This is a pretty nice tarp kit. Uh, you've got a, a rope that just enables you to get it to the back a little bit easier and uh, keep from snagging it on any debris. It's also got a, a ball bearing set and a spring loaded handle so you can uh, service the kit. It's also an aluminum rod. I don't think we're going to be able to see too much of it, but uh, that rod going across is, is aluminum, not steel, so pretty durable setup. It's got grommets going down it, if you notice. Uh, those grommets would actually line up with uh, the hooks on the side of the trailer, make it very simple to uh, deploy the tarp and then also tie it down. Just need to throw a handful of bungee cords in your toolbox. A couple other details. Uh, integrated sidestep for safety if you want to get into the bed to strap down or whatnot, make it a little bit easier. You'll notice these are double broke fenders as well, not the, the single broke. It's also got the bullet LED lights and this unit is powder coated. So one thing I'll point out as well, the industry, uh, some uses what we'll call a stack frame, which would mean you got a full wrap tongue and then you've got a main frame. And by stack, I'm referring to the front roughly four to five feet of the trailer. Uh, you've got a stack frame, which is basically double the poundage. Uh, the other style frame you see in the industry is what I call a mono frame, which basically means from the front to the back of the trailer, generally it's I-beam. Uh, both are good setups. The stack frame is a little bit more steel, but again, it's giving you that extra steel right where you're gonna want it. Uh, again, this area between your spring hanger and the, uh, and the coupler, your midpoint, of course, would be your highest point load. And on this, you've got a stack frame which cuts your clear span uh, on like a mono frame, which goes front to back. So on this particular one, we've got a silver wagon wheel it's got the newer style Ford adjusting brakes. And then behind the black cap on the end of the hub, you've got uh, the Easy Lube uh, bearings. When these are new, sometimes they're pretty pliable. You can actually peel them off to your finger. Just take a grease gun and uh, you can do your own bearing maintenance on this trailer fairly simply. Also, uh, while we're looking at the tires, if you do notice the green cap, that is a nitrogen filled tire. Uh, nitrogen does have a few benefits, probably most importantly, uh, nitrogen doesn't have the humidity that air does, so it gives you, supposed to anyway, give you a, a longer lifespan of the tire before you get any dry rot because there's no, uh, no moisture inside of the, the wheel tire assembly itself. Integrated keyway in the side gives a lot of extra strength, uh, cuts down the flexion, also gives it uh, a good look. The stake pockets on these are standard equipment. Um, give you some extra support. If you want to go a little bit higher than say just a two by 12, uh, the stake pockets would allow you to go up another foot. Uh, what we like to do if you're using just a two by 12 would be to drop it in. Some guys will notch it out around the tarp up front. And then we generally just put a lag or two in from the bottom, keeps it in place. Uh, one nice thing about these stake pockets are they're double the height of the normal pocket. They return all the way back. It's kind of smart the way they designed it, the top rail. Uh, sits right on the pocket to give some extra support to the sidewall. The rear of the trailer at our hinge point, you'll notice the mainframe's boxed in. They also use a double pass weld on the hinge itself. And then there's a grease dirt right on uh, that hinge area. Also little details, you'll notice the rear of the spring hanger is a gusset going out to the frame to the hanger. Uh, gives some extra reinforcement to those critical areas. Trailer does have a two-way combination gate, so it'll uh, do a barn door setup like most. You simply undo the door, swing it to the sides, and then it's also a multi-function where you can spread with it. So if you do the barn door setup, simply pull your safety chain and clip back. And then if you would like to do the two-way gate, you'd simply set the depth where you'd want it, pull your pin out, put it in the retainer, and you can spread your stone or similar materials. Greaserts on your service areas on the door. Uh, one of the things newer for about 2020, Short Track went to a heavier hinge, put zerts up top, and then your door itself, uh, you've got the zerts. They also went to a extra heavy duty top rail uh, on this door, 
boxed in the bottom. Uh, went through a little bit heavier uh, on the door itself here. So while we've got the door open, you can't hardly see the seven gauge floor. Uh, you'll see it is pretty flush. One thing we do, uh, or one thing that we like that, that Short Track does, I should say, is full seam weld uh, your seams there. So there's no stitch welds there. So it does make it a little harder to see the seven gauge, but it is there. Undermount ramps are standard. Went to a little bit heavier hook bar at the rear here within the last year. Also went to a little bit wider ramp. Little details we like. These ramps are very simple to deploy even with one hand. Uh, there's no, we have some manufacturers that have uh, flip down doors here that, that can rust out over time if there's not grease zerts or similar on them. We like this design. It's a very simple, um, simple ramp deployment style. All LED lights are standard. It's got a fully sealed wire harness. Uh, Short Track does a, a little bit better prep job on the steel, we find, than, than many. Uh, this particular steel is uh, Conestoga Wagoner tarp to the plant, stored inside, and then the final product's blasted, not the individual components. It is blasted with steel grit, not sand grit. Goes through a phosphate wash, and then goes through a zinc primer. Uh, many skip the zinc primer. And a lot of plants are stealing, uh, storing steel uh, outside. This particular unit is equipped with the dual piston hoist. We also do stock the uh, scissor hoist and the single telescopic hoist up front. Each have their own benefits. By time, the telescopic and dual piston tend to take about the same amount of time. Dual piston, of course, a nice wide stance. You'll notice that there's grease zerts top and bottom of each individual piston. Ramps, of course, we said are stored underneath. There is a large tool tray up front. It's about two to two and a half feet by the width of the trailer. So you're going to get about a six and a half foot wide box. Of course, the trailer bed itself is uh, 83 inches, um, just under seven foot. So if we take a look at all the wiring, you'll notice on the axles, that's all a sealed molded harness. You'll notice the wiring's all grommeted where it goes in and out of frame. Additionally, up front, you'll notice everything's grommeted. Do a nice job with the, uh, with the wire harnesses um, on this particular trailer. Other little details, if you look between the, uh, the tongue and the mainframe, all the joints are siliconed shut to try to keep rust out of those most critical areas. Same thing in your fender well areas where your wiring comes out to your light, etc. So, like how they seal everything up and try to help make your investment last as long as possible. We also notice on the slipper spring there's a grease zert. Uh, that is not common in the industry. Most of them will just put a traditional, uh, traditional setup. This one's got the grease zert for some extra serviceability. This trailer is going to weigh in at about 3,400 pounds normally. As equipped here, you're going to be about 3,650. On a 14,000-pound trailer, it's going to give you a net legal payload of a little over 10,000 pounds. You're also going to pick up about 2,000 pounds of tongue weight. Total legal payload until you balance out between the axles. You're going to be a hair under 12,000 pounds. This unit is available in other sizes. We stock them 12, 14, 16 foot. It's also available in a gooseneck model. And then we also bring some in with the 8,000 pound axle upgrade. And then we do some 16 foot in the triaxles. Most of the features we put on here uh, are normal. There's also other available features that may not be quite as common. Uh, this particular unit is equipped for jack stands at the back. We do not put them on this one standard, uh, but you can do jack stands. There are color changes available. We can do charcoal or red, some of the different colors out there. I can get it high sides as well. We offer it in a four foot high side. If you have any questions on this or any of our other trailers, feel free to give us a ring at 717-220-4220. Or you can visit us on the web at bestchoicetrailers.com. Thanks for looking.